Hello, David. Hey, Joe. How are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you doing? Good, good. Welcome. Thank you. Stella, welcome. Welcome, Francisco. Welcome. Guys, we'll get started in a few minutes here. Hey, Cam, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Welcome. Hi, Cam. Hi, David. Hello, hey, Rose. Rose. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. How are you doing, guys? Good, good. Welcome. Excellent. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. All right, guys, a uh, couple more minutes. We'll go ahead and get started, okay? Sure.
All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, uh, so this evening, what we're going to do is uh, this is uh, just Q&A. So uh, really is whatever you guys want to talk about. If you want to um, go over the systems, the markets, any particular trades that that um, that you have, um, we can just open up the floor and um, uh, get started here. All right. So any questions on anything? Any questions, concerns? Uh, can you go back to the, uh, to the uh, British pound US dollar trade? Uh, pound dollar. All right, short, right? Short? Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, let's let's move this over. <clears throat> Are you still in this trade, Ken? Yes, I am. Okay, good. We got a little bit of a bounce in it. Mm -hmm. And um but I'm, 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 I'm holding to it. Um, is that a daily chart or, or a four hour? Uh, that's a four hour chart. That's four hour chart. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm definitely sticking to it. Why, why are you holding it? Why am I holding it short? Yeah. Uh, because uh, the trend is down, it's reversed. And uh, I think it's going to uh, that one purple line that you have at the very bottom. Okay. I think uh, tonight we'll take that out, and uh, we'll keep we'll keep dropping. And uh, and one of the reasons why, if you put up a chart of the dollar index, the dollar index, okay. Yep. You can see that that's holding steady. That's not dropping. Mm -hmm. And uh, as the dollar index gets stronger. You normally see the uh, British pound, uh, U.S. dollar get get uh, get weaker. Get weaker, okay. Yep. That's my rationale. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. And if all else fails. Yeah, and you know, I'm at I'm at a profit on it right now. I had a good entry on it, and I'm at a profit, so I'll, I'll watch it. And uh, if I uh, get to a point where I see too much of a reversal to the upside, then I'll I'll just get out of the position at a small mm -hmm. gain. Okay. Do you guys, uh, do, does anyone else see anything in this trade that Kim is in the pound dollar? Do you guys notice anything? So take a look at, take a look at um, what the price, um, the price pattern. So what is the price pattern telling you? um currently to the downside what is it what is it telling you is there anything you guys can make from the pattern hey dave can mm -hmm. you hear me hey mo yeah hey. um from my end i'm starting to notice that pound pairs um uh pound aussie they're starting to kind of make a u-turn on support on the daily on the daily okay. yeah that's what i'm, I'm noticing so, like, if you look at the uh, pound USD on the daily, okay, it's like, yeah, it's kind of making a U turn on about uh, one, three, four, two to the upside. Yeah, it's starting to kind of like U turn. So, yeah, right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's making a move to the upside here. I mean, you don't know if it's going to be, you know, continue up, but uh -huh. that's what I'm, I'm, I'm picking up. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't looked at that. So if you kind of like, yeah, if you kind of like zoom out, you will see that you know that that level was respected a couple of times. Yeah, well, um, what he's what he's looking at, Dave. If you uh, do it, on, look at it on the daily. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. We we got a couple of up candles that hold the held the support that we made back on uh, September thirtieth. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I'm holding is because we have not broke above the pivot point. Well. You don't mm. use that. We, we have not broke above our resistance yet. Okay. So so the trend is down until we do that. Yeah. So um so it held kind of held support. It looks like this might be on the daily time frame. 
this is a this is an important area here and um uh, that's a good that's a good call there mo uh, mm. because yeah it could it could hold this and to kim's point it could um we're still we're still in a selling zone right so we're still in a downward trend so yeah um it can certainly move higher um and then look to test resistance up in here um but it can also go back down and retest this support um uh what i what i um uh, so that's a, that's good too. it's always good to look at the daily um and sometimes even the weekly let's take a quick look at the weekly here just to see what's shaping up on the weekly um so on the weekly we've got selling here yeah we've got selling uh we got lower lower highs okay lower highs and lower lows so the the trend is absolutely to the downside um yeah and it it looks like an early we don't have a short signal yet but it's uh, definitely selling selling yeah um but like you know anything can happen price could move higher um on the 240 though so if we go back here to the 240 Mm -hmm. and you know when we we always want to uh get back we can do analysis on the on the um, higher time frames and even the smaller time frames uh but when it comes to trading executing our trade we always want to stay on the trading window um that we that we that we're using um, what I've seen, um, a lot of times traders will go back and forth, you know, um, they'll go from a, a 15 minute to an hourly and, and then, you know, uh, trading becomes very con confusing. Um, once we determine the time frame that we want to trade with, we want to stay there. However, like I said, we you know we can do analysis on the other time frames. Just make sure when we do analysis on either the daily, the weekly or the monthly or even you know, a smaller time frame. Don't get lost within that within that time frame. Okay, so it uh, we want to stay within that time frame. Um, uh, this is what I'm looking at here. So here's a pattern here. So price give a sell short signal here, moved up, right? Remember we talked about this, guys. Expect a pullback, even on your shorts, right? When you take a short position, always expect a pullback. So what the institutions are doing is once they decide that price is going down, they're going to move price in the other direction. And they do that um, for several reasons, right? Uh, the main reason is that they're getting a, a low, they want to get a lower price. So they want to pull, bring price pull back to a support area, okay, and then take the move in the direction that they want to that they want to move. Another reason is that they want to stop out all the traders. So most traders, if they're going short, they will put a stop loss in this area here, right between support and resistance. We don't want to do that, okay, because I'm sure you guys know sometimes if you put a stop loss. Guess what? You get stopped out, and then the trade will go in the direction you thought it would. <laughs> you thought it would go right, uh, so we don't want to do that. Okay, um, but if you guys look at this pattern here, so price moved higher, two cons white consolidating candles. Can, then guess what? That's a big candle here. The institutions came in in a big way, brought price down. Okay. Price came down, held support here, moved higher. Guess what? We've got another two consolidating candles, wide consolidating candles here, kind of just like here. Okay, and guess what? Price came down pretty, pretty heavy. You guys see that? And now we've got we've got one wide consolidating candle. And then this is the current consolidating candle right here. So what we can expect, what we can expect is that if this candle 
get candle close and we get a red candle, guess what? We could come back down and retest, all right? Retest this support here, all right? Um, so that's what we, we can anticipate. If that doesn't happen, so we always wanna look at, um, we, we know that we'll always get out with on a hard, hard close, right? When we get a, a, a white arrow, we close the trade. But this is something you guys wanna be looking at also. Not on the daily, you can look on the daily, but if we stay here on the, um, on the four hour chart, just check this out for a second here. This was the last trade to the downside. So here, here was the last move and similar to what Mo saw on the, um, on the daily, but on the 240, we also held support, right? You guys see that? Yep, sure do. We held support here on the 240. Here is resistance. Here is resistance here. Here is resistance. We broke through that resistance. Okay, and we kind of back in this zone right here. Look at this here. Look at this here. So if price doesn't, if we don't get a red candle and price comes down and retest, we could get a reversal to the upside. Okay, so we get white con con consolidating candles here. If we get a green candle, so let's say for instance, we get up into this area right in this zone here, right in here, and we get a green candle, we'll get a sell signal to close this trade here. Okay. So, so Cam, you're pretty close. If price moves higher, right? If price moves higher, um, then where was your entry? Was your entry here or somewhere in here? No, it was higher. It was up around about uh, right where you had the uh, red down arrow, right, uh, right there, uh, right there where you have like the top of the uh, white candles. Go to right your right. Here. Here. No, not no. Right in between there. Right, right. Go to right there. Okay. That was my entry right in there. Okay. So what I would do. Um, this is a bit tricky here. I would just be, I would just, if it, if it gets above this area, gives you anything close to, to a green candle, I would look to start at least taking some profits. Yeah. Well, one thing I'm looking at, David, on this right here is that uh, the moving averages, the red and the uh, green moving averages that you have, mm -hmm. the, slope, the slope of those lines haven't changed that. And usually those, the slope of those lines will change, they'll flatten out before you start getting a reverse arrow uh, with the actual candles. That's a good point, yeah. yeah so we haven't seen like, like if you look to your left where you have all those white candles, mm -hmm. uh, go to your left right there, there you go. You see how the slope of the, uh, that those, that, uh, that the green and the red moving average, how it flattened out mm -hmm. before it starts going the uh, opposite way after the drop. Yep. Yeah, so you usually see those start to flatten out before you actually get a reversal in the other direction. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because um, now, now go to the top of that, that that range. Keep going. See how the green line, you see that, the moving averages? Mm -hmm. You see how they flattened out before we started going down? So yeah. that's, that's what I'll look for, the green and the red uh, 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 moving averages that you have on there. I don't know if those are 50s or 16s or 21, whatever you have, but... Um, but that's what I noticed is the moving averages are flattened out before you get a reversal in the chart pattern. Okay, um, very good. You guys, you guys get that? That makes sense. Also, what we can look at, um, you somewhat safe because it's still it's still holding the moving average. Right, so we're not getting a lot of consolidation within the moving average. That's something we can look for. You see here, see all this consolidation within the moving average, right? So that that will sometimes uh, 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 cause a re reversal. Okay, um, it's it's hugging. So 
it's hugging that moving average, just coming right along with it, right along with it. So um, what I would like to see is a red candle. Boy, if we can get a red candle in here and price com comes down, then, that's, then that's, that's really good, okay? And then we can add, right? So this is an area where we can add too, guys, okay? So just like when we go long, we can add on a pullback to the moving average. When we go short, we can add, we can add to a pullback to the moving average. Your confirmation would be what? What would be your confirmation to add to this trade? So let's say, Cam, you add, you, you entered in here, right? You entered your position in here. Price moved down. Okay. Um, where could you add? Could you add here? You can add. I would say, here, yeah, right? you could. You could. You, if you start getting at red candles, you can add, and you can definitely add if you get between those uh, two purple, those two that those two purple uh, support and uh, resistance lines right below that. Yeah, and you can uh, if you if we get a red. You no, know, this is a this is. Um, uh, I wouldn't say it's risky. It's it's just um, uh, aggressive, a bit aggressive but somewhat safe that if you get a red candle, just like here, a red candle after those white consolidating candle, that's a, that's, that's a good sign that the price is continuing to move lower. So you can add right on that close, wait for a close of that red candle. So if we get a close of a red candle here, definitely, if you wanna be a bit aggressive, you can add uh, to that position. And you can always add on a break of support. We know that, but we can always do that. All right. Very good. Anything else, guys? Oh, can you bring up a chart on a Bitcoin? That was up uh, like 3,500 bucks today. And uh, like I say, I use other proxies to trade that, like uh, Marathon Digital, Coinbase, and, uh, and uh, MicroStrategy, Riot Blockchain. Yeah. See, when we talked yesterday, Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have that breakout. That breakout came after our meeting uh, yes, from yesterday. So isn't that ironic, huh? <laughs> so yeah. what did we talk about yesterday? What we did we, what was, uh, we had a scenario, right, for Bitcoin. And what was that scenario? Yeah, well, we talked about the wedge pattern that it was forming, mm -hmm. that it was either going to break, it's going to be break to the upside or break to the downside. And we see that it broke to the upside. It broke to the upside and pretty aggressive, right? That's a big yeah. candle. So a big move to the upside, right? So, um, and what we also talked about is that um, we had a higher percentage of the, of, of, of the move hoping that it would break to the, to the upside because we have an upward trend. So when we, when we, all, when we, have, when we have an upward trend, and we have a wedge, a triangle, okay, then the, it's a higher probability that it will break to the upside, just like this, okay? So um, we, had a, we already had a buy signal, so that was good. We had a buy signal, it price held support. You guys see that? The price held support. Uh, this was a bit scary in here because we had red candles coming in. You know, that's never good, right? Um, but we gapped up, gapped up on Sunday, and now price is moving higher. So now Bitcoin is uh, making all-time highs here, right? So uh, let's see here. So here is the all-time high. Right here is the all-time high. All right, I think that's 67, I believe. I can't see that. I think it's 67. Okay, um, 66 and change. So right here, it's making all time highs. So um, we can anticipate guys that uh, there's no stop in Bitcoin right now. Um, I, I think 70,000 is, 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 that's done. 70,000 is done. Um, uh, so the next level and, and Bitcoin like, likes to go to the whole numbers, like 60,000, 50,000, 
you know, it might stop at about um, definitely 70,000, and then we might get cons some consolidation around 75, uh, but look for 80. I'll definitely look for, uh, for 80,000. Hey, David. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Question for you. Um, is Bitcoin's chart showing the 24-hour activity, or does that stop at a certain time? Um, this chart here? Yes. Yeah, so the, the chart, um, we use trade station, so the chart does stop um, on the weekend. But the, that they're still trading. Um, but the chart, yeah, we, we do not get any, we'll get movement in here on the price, just like you guys see here. But the chart itself will stop on, on the weekend. Yeah, good question. Right, but it, right now it is still trading after hours and 24 hours. Oh, yes, yes. It's 24 so, hours. Yes, yes, yes. So that candle can still move up because you're, oh, you're on a four-hour chart. Oh, absolutely. You're on a four-hour chart, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So it will, it, just like 4X, it will, mm -hmm. it will um, move uh, 24 hours. Yeah, period. Gotcha. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, sure. Um, but this is a good, this is, if you guys look here, this is kind of like a cup and handle, <laughs> right? Um, so this is, this is very, this is a very strong move. Whenever we see this, where price hits a high, makes a kind of, you know, makes this right here, holds, it held, held support. This is support right in here. That's a pretty good move. So we can anticipate um, a lot of buy-in to come into Bitcoin, All right? So we've gotten past this. Here is where all the trouble was, all the, all the trouble with Bitcoin. So it's cleared, definitely cleared, cleared this, um, this resistance in here, right? So, um, just understand once it's, and I, I'll consider it's gotten past this resistance here. So there is no, and this is really the resistance. This is just a high here. So there is nothing, there's nothing above guys. There's nothing above this area here that can hold the price back, right? So there's no resistance above this area to keep, keep um, Bitcoin down. So we could see days where it's up, you know, um, you know, three, four, 5,000, you know, six, I mean, it could, it could go anywhere, guys. Yeah. And the cool thing about um, Bitcoin, we talked about this yesterday, is that we don't have to trade Bitcoin, right? But if you guys notice, you know, look through your cryptos and you'll notice that most of the cryptos will be, will be up, right? You guys have noticed that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, look at, look at your, 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 you know, look at the cryptos and you'll notice that most of them will be up. Might not be as high as Bitcoin, but you know, they might be up 13%, 30%, 20%. Um, but the majority will be up. They'll follow the move in Bitcoin. They will follow the move in Bitcoin. So uh, that's good for cryptos. Absolutely good, good for cryptos. Anything else? You want to bring up a chart of the uh, the uh, S and P five hundred and the uh, the Nasdaq. All right. Uh, those are trading at all-time highs too. Yeah. So you have uh, Bitcoin and you have the uh, major indices trading at all-time highs. So if you guys are not in these markets, that's a good point. Um, you're missing out uh, because you know this doesn't happen often, where we've got everything lining up and. You know, I want to say that um, it looks like that we might have a, um, we might see where Bitcoin is running with the market, with the equity markets. 
you know, I, I, I don't know yet, but I'm, I, I, I think I'm starting to see a correlation between the equity markets and Bitcoin. If that happens, that'd be great. Hey, Peter, you had a question? Yeah, I have a question about um, this chart. So the price been moving in a like a tunnel, like a channel, uptrend channel. So usually in the past that it would were the price is currently at the top of the channel. So it seems like like for the technology stocks like Nvidia, uh, Tesla, when it hits the top of the channel, it breaks through the channel. It goes parabolic. So is it most likely it's going to break the top of the channel? No, you're referring to the NASDAQ right here? Well, I'm looking at this. He, he brought up, he's, this is the, well, yeah, this is the NASDAQ. So the video did that. Tesla did that. So that's a possibility, right? Or in a strong uptrend, it'll break the top of the uptrend ch channel. That's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's a guarantee. Um, but yes, if it's if it's in an up, if it's in an uptrend, and it's it's knocking against resistance, is what you're saying, right? That there's a strong likelihood that it will break through resistance. Is that yeah. your question? Yeah, I mean, the video was in a uptrend channel. Let's pull that up. What's, and it just what's, blew what's, right past. Okay. The what's the resistance. symbol? N V D A. On a daily time frame? Yeah. Okay. All right. And it's kind of like this is what's pulling the NASDAQ up. It was in a, you know, if you could see, you know, it hit resistance, went down hit top of resistance came back to support it mm -hmm. did that for a while and then it just blew past resistance and went parabolic yeah um tesla did that the same thing this last yeah. week. so i if if i want you guys to think a little differently it's not that it's not that um these stocks are pulling the nasdaq i I, I look at it a little differently. I think the NASDAQ is pulling the stocks. Okay. okay. Um, uh, one stock can't really move the index, but the index can, can basically um, move the whole market. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so um, uh, that's a good point. If you look here, so, and it's, if, if, if you guys, this is similar to Bitcoin, okay? So let's take a look at Bitcoin and you see what Bitcoin did here, right? Had a sell signal, okay? Kind of, that's, I, I say this is a cup on the handle. It's a kind of pull back, retraced a bit, buy signal and is now moving higher, broke the, the is breaking the all time high. Same with NVIDIA. Right. If you look here, it made a high, retraced, gave a sell signal, retrace, broke resistance, and now we've got a buy signal right here on a breakup resistance. Okay, so that's this is a very big move. That's a powerful move. Okay, um, but you have to understand that it's not it's not it's not the stock itself. It's more so this. So if we look at the NASDAQ, we've got a buy signal and we've got some seasonality guys that's happening here. So normally um, October, in October, 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 every year expect, expect the market to make a move in October. Okay, October going into the end of the year. Okay. So um, it doesn't happen every year, <laughs> but it happens a lot. Um, and if we've, get, if we've got selling, 
If we've got selling coming in, boy, let me tell you, if we've got selling, if we get a nice correction, uh, a 5% a correction, 10% correction going into October, expect, expect the market to go up. If we if we uh, if we had a high if we had a, if we're making highs going into October without the correction, then we might not get a big move into the fourth quarter. Remember, fourth quarter that's your buying season, that's Christmas. So tech, 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 right? All those iPhones have to be sold. Com you know, computers, television, all that. You know. Um, so your fourth quarter, always anticipate the, the, the fourth quarter to be the best quarter for you. So if we can anticipate that, we want to sell in in October. So if you guys look here, look at this for a second here. Look at this for a second. If you look here, this is going to line up perfectly here. Here is the, here is the NASDAQ. It bottomed out. This is support. You guys see that? It bottomed out and made a bottom right here in October, October the 1st. And guess what? It's been moving up ever since. Can we safely um, assume that the previous resistance, the previous top, would be a good support? The previous right here would yeah. be a support? Yeah. Yeah, so um, resistance, previous resistance is always support. Okay, so now this is our support. So we got a buy signal. This is our buy signal right here that the system gave right here on a break of this resistance. But now this will be support. So if price comes down, if, if this fails, if this move fails, price comes down and hits support, we'll get a sell signal to be out of the market out of the NASDAQ. Actually, David, you know, in that chart, I see that exact pattern mm -hmm. that it came back to support like the uh, one gentleman just mentioned and actually started moving back up. If you go over to your left and you look at the, uh, I don't know, I guess it's the March time frame. Yeah, look at the uh, yellow candles. Yeah, right around there. Go all the way to the, to the top of those, those trading ranges. Right here? No, go up, 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 up right around there okay there you see that break out there mm -hmm. you got your blue arrow came yes. right back down and it held support before it went there go back to your left 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 right there at that breakout you see that breakout right there mm -hmm. yeah, between buy and, signal. and when it came right back down it came right to support and then it took off yeah that's probably exactly if it when it, if, when it comes back down again that's probably what's going to happen again. It's going to come right back down to the breakout point, which is the previous highs. Like go straight up from where? Go straight up. Okay, now go back over to your left, to your left, right there. It'll probably come right back down to about there, and then it'll go back up and we'll hit new highs again if it takes out the prior highs. Yeah, I don't um, don't expect though um, for a correction any type of big pullback. Not, not now. Not now? Not now. Uh -uh. No, no. They're buying. So we have to understand, right? Um, if we look, look here for a second. Yeah, this is, this is, um, this is very different. Now, I mean, anything can happen, right? But <laughs> um, you, you have to understand that the institutions, they, they have to make their money for the year. They have to make their book for the year. So they're going to push price up. And this is a solid move. Um, if you look here, these candles, look at these. This is, this, this, they're moving price. Um, so I wouldn't, you, you, you might get a, a, a somewhat of a pullback, but don't expect any, any pullback where you're going to get a better price. I mean, if you look at this right here, guys, that's steady climbing, right? Um, from here all the way here, they're going to push that price all through November, all through December. Now, if something crazy happens in the economy, if something crazy happens out there, then we might, you know, 
but we can base our trading on that. This price action here is solid price action. I mean, this moving average is moving up nicely here. Um, this is just solid. And we're, we're, we're in November. Um, you know, we've got, we've got, we're out of October, we're in November, we, we are, you know, we're almost halfway into, into November. They're going to push price up all the way up, all the way right. up. And, and Dave, they have earnings coming out next Wednesday. So based on the history of earnings, they usually pull back a little bit before earnings and then they, they go up, not vertically, but they do go up they do go after up. earnings call. Yeah. So yeah, don't I, I you know if you guys uh, if you're trading any of these tech stocks and you're hoping for a pullback for a better price, um, yeah, now is not the time. Now is not the time. Francisco, you had a question. Yes, sir. Um, well, how you doing? This is my first time here. That's fine. So welcome. Uh, uh, thank you, man. I, I, I'm a scalper, so I, I only trade US thirty. I okay. used to trade, um, you know. That DJ, DJ, but, you know, wake up through three in the morning to trade was tough for me. So I started trading the US study. Okay. And, um, as you know, they give me a H is always going up by NASDAQ. So I only buy, I don't do sales, but I'm a scalper. So I do five minutes, 50 minutes. Um, that's my charge. I'm not. Like I see you guys do four hours daily. Cause I don't wait. For me, I can wait. So one of the <laughs> question is, uh, God, I mean, that's my personality. I, I mean, I can wait. You know, it's, 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 that's not me. I, I can I can't sleep with that open trade. You know, that's yeah. personal. That's me. Yeah. So um, I mean, I, I'm waiting for that um, pullback. To be honest those resistance that come support breaking retest uh, i trade those two okay i love pullbacks i love pullbacks as we know there's no days without hours there's no hours without minutes so i know for a fact in one hour when i start doing lower low and lower highs for sure it's going to retest that resistance that comes support mm -hmm. if one hour you're keeping the uptrend it's not going down i mean you know, time frame correlations of what I do. Uh, Ms. Calper, I have a few funding accounts. Thank God. But I want to do more like a swing trade. Okay. So for you, what's the trick to hold? Okay. I'm going to, <laughs> you know, you I remind mean, me um, <laughs> of one of our uh, top traders, um, uh, Ricky. And um, Ricky is a lot like you. He, he doesn't like to hold. He's a scalper. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bring him up here. Um, I would, I would, if I, if I was, I would go and I would go on, on the website or website and check out Ricky right here. Um, he's a super scalper and he mm -hmm. trades the, the US 30, just like you, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. just like you. And uh, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't hold anything. He trades on a, um, uh 10 15 minute time frame right but he's yeah. a monster man right i mean mm -hmm. this is one of his uh he did uh hundred and twelve thousand dollars in one day right mm -hmm. that was his biggest day um forty one thousand right here in one day fifteen thousand this is this is what he sent me over um so it's uh the the, just go to monstertradingsystems.com success story and he's got a video here and um, he came in he came into one of our classes and spoke to our traders and and um, pretty good stuff but the reason I mentioned Ricky is because um, it's tough it's 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 really difficult to do what he's what he's what he's doing um, you've got to be really quick you know, um, I don't, I, I don't trade the US 30. Um, I mean, at some, at perhaps sometime in the future, we might, we might uh, give it, you know, an opportunity for our traders, give our traders an opportunity to trade it. But it's, it's fast. It's a fast mover, right? <laughs> yes, very quick. 
it's a, it's a fast mover. So you've got to be, um, I mean, you've got to watch it. Um, uh, can you make a ton of money? Yes. Yes. You, you can make a lot of money with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if you wanted to swing trade, if you wanted to swing trade, um, and what what you what you could do is you could go to a smaller time frame, um, something in between uh, the two the two forty and uh, a fifteen minute, like an hourly time frame, might be a good swing trade opportunity. Okay, um, if you don't want to do a sixty minute, you can do a thirty. Okay, a thirty minute might give you some good opportunities. Right, um, but just know that when you when you reduce the time frame, you're gonna have to pay attention to it more. It's, it's a lot more work, you know. It's a, it's a lot more work. Even if you even if you went to the pound pairs, uh, Kim, you're getting that red candle, bud. Yeah, I'm looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I got it on another screen too. Yeah, you're getting that red candle. Uh, but uh, yeah, Francisco, I would say, um, I would say test, uh, test, uh, um, you know, the 30, uh, perhaps a, a one hour, um, and you, you might be able to get some nice swings out of it. You will, the, the idea is um, you want at some point um, we want to go to a higher time frame because that's really where the money is, mm -hmm. unless you're really quick. Okay, so if you if you if you're able to catch if you're able to capture the moves, kind of like what Kim is doing. If you bought here, right? If you bought here, and let's say let's say you shorted here, you shorted here. And then you look to short here again, and you put some decent capital to work, right? And you continue to follow this process where you go long and short and long and short, and you put it, it, uh, enough capital to work, you will never scalp. Yeah. I mean, I've had conversations with Ricky where he's like, Dave, I, I wish, you know, I'm making a ton of money, but he doesn't have a life. Right. Mm. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah. So I mean, it, for me, it's about time. You know. I mean, I just like in out. Hey, I'm here. I'm bye. Bye. Yeah. Take my money and can't sleep. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. tough for me to hold a trade for a long time. <laughs> it, it's tough because it's not. I mean, look look at it like this. Okay. Um, when you if you have a good process in place. Let's take a look at, um, sometimes the only reason we, uh, it's hard for us is because we don't have a, a really good process in place. Um, we, don't, we don't have the confidence in holding, right? right? Um, mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not your personality. Um, it's, it's, you don't have a lot of confidence in, in, in the process to be able to hold overnight. Um, let's see here. That's just my opinion. Uh, pending data, pending data. Um, the way I, the way I look at, um, uh, trading is that, um, rather than, um, you know, saying that we are a scalper or a swing trader or a position trader. Um, you know, I look at it like we should just be a trader. And depending on what the market is doing, that's when we, um, we change our style, right? For example, so here is with 4X, right? And you mentioned 4X also. Um, we know we can use the dollar index, the dollar, mm -hmm. the dollar index here, and it, Kim had mentioned this earlier, we can use that as the barometer for the entire Forex market. So if you look here, okay, the Forex market as a whole, as a whole is consolidating between 
resistance and support right here. So if we're trying to trade on a daily time frame, on a daily time frame, we, we, we are not going to capture a lot of moves because guess what? Okay, the Forex market as a whole is consolidating. Okay, you see that, Francisco? Yeah, I see it. Okay, if the, if the Forex market was doing this here, if it was trending down like this, nice, big, long trends, either up or down, then we can bring out our daily time frame and we can capture a lot of moves, okay? Because we're consolidating between support and resistance, but we've got wide consolidation. This is nice, big consolidation between support and resistance. We can trade on the 240 minute time frame and get some pretty good moves. Let's say for instance, price consolidated tighter like this. So it consolidated tighter like this, Forex consolidated tighter, right? Not as wide as this, but like this here, then we would have to um, move our time frame down from a four hour chart to perhaps a one hour chart. That makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, and let's say it consolidated closer like this. Let's say the, then the price, the dollar, consolidated in this tight area here, guess what? We would have to throw away the one hour and we might have to go to a 15 minute time frame. Okay? It's a bit, it's a, it's a different type of thinking, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we think of, think of um, your time frame as like a scope, right? It's a scope and, and as, as price um, moves further from support and resistance, right? We can increase the time frame as price squeezes through and between support and resistance. We need to reduce our time frame so that we can get these moves in here. Okay, so the smaller the time frame, the smaller the consolidation. The smaller we've got to, we've got to bring in our time frame to trade these moves in here. As, as the consolidation moves higher, we can increase our time frame, increase our time frame, increase our time frame so that we can capture those moves. If we were, if the, if the if, and a lot of traders don't think about this, but let's say for instance, whatever we're trading, whatever we're trading, let's say it's consolidated in here, and we are trading on a daily time frame. I don't care what how good of a trader you are, you're gonna fail. If price is trading within this consolid, this this support and resistance here, and you're trading a, a four-hour chart, I don't care how good you are, you're gonna fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's say you're trading a, a five-minute chart, and you're trading with this in this area in here, you're gonna have a better chance of being successful. Because guess what? You reduce your time frame to kind of trade in here. It's a it's it's a little different thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay, Francisco. But um, but as as we mature in our trading, as we mature in our trading, that's what we want to do. We want to base our time frame um, on on whatever price is doing in front of us. Make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. One thing too, I want to say is, uh, when you trade on the uh, mm -hmm. the shorter time frame, like Francisco's doing, I'm I'm sure he's probably very good at it, but it's a lot more work, man. <laughs> it's a lot more work when you trade on those short time frames. I, I started doing lower time frames because I was waiting days for the four hour setup, and sometimes I hit my stop loss, and that's when revenge. The revenge, the, you say you're going to win, so it never <laughs> happens. So I started doing lower time frames because those lower, lower, lower highs in the U.S. study, specifically in U.S. study, on the five minutes time frame, it looks beautiful. In, to me, it's about uh, risk reward. I mean, I can win um, DJ 50 pips. If I have my stop loss, 10 pips, all right, that's one to five. Excellent. On the U.S. study, I can, I can go to five minutes. Let's say I have 100 pips, I stop loss, but I'm going to make 500 pips. It's the same one to five. 
It's about risk management, right? So for me, how many pips is irrelevant to me? Because it's about size for me. How, how many pips you're risking, how many pips you're going to get. So I see it clear in the five minutes um, time frames, and they happen a lot in a day. So I can take three setup, four setup, get to my goal, go to sleep. I'm out. <laughs> because I don't have the patience to wait for four hours. Yeah. I was waiting for four hours to make a lower high. Let's say GU right now is on a lower high. So I have to go to 30 minutes time frame, see if they go make a new lower low. And maybe that happened two, three in the morning. And you know, it's, it wasn't for me. I just, I just, huh? sometimes I miss a trade. <laughs> And your your pro, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, I'm glad you, um, uh, you brought this up uh, because there is uh, your personality. Um, as you know, we do one on one coaching, mm -hmm. and we we um, you know we 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 kind of do an analysis with our traders as far as their personality. Everyone's personality is different, and. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so the time the time frames are important, but but your personality is different. You know, if you're a Type A personality, and um, and we what we found is that most traders most traders are a Type A. Okay, um, most traders are a Type A personality, and uh, they they want that action, right? Mm -hmm. um, I I have to slow traders down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to slow them back and say, hey, you know, just kind of take it slow, right? I'm like the parent, the big parent, you know, the parent that's telling traders, uh, just uh, don't, don't trade as much capital, kind of take it slow, um, you know, manage your capital, uh, don't trade, as, uh, you know, most traders are type A and they, you're going to go for it. So, um yeah, if you and, and trading is about um, you, you, it's a personal relationship. Everyone has a personal relationship with trading. Um, and so your personality is going to go into your trading. And if there is a fit, if your personality fits your trading style, that's when you're going to get the results, right? That's when you're going to True. get the results. When your personality, if your personality does not fit your trading style, um, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm a bit different. I get I I I get aggressive when I need to get aggressive. I kind of pull back um, when I need to pull back based on the market. Um, but like I said, Ricky. Um, he is, he's always ready to go, you know, he's always ready to go. And, um, sounds like you, you know, you've got the personality for it just when you do that. Um, and it's, you know, it sounds like you're managing, just manage your, just manage yourself. You're going to have to manage yourself. Right. Um, because you all, there's no rest, right? So when you trade, you trade, you in, you out, um, you know, um, manage, man, just manage. The cool thing about it is that you know who you are. <laughs> that's exactly. The cool, that's the cool <laughs> thing, right? You know who you are as a trader. And, um, you know, I, I, I rather see that than, than someone that, that's wishy washy. So don't change your trading style because, because, you know, of, of whatever someone is telling, you got to go with your gut. You got to go. With uh, I mean, gut. my question was about swing because I know if I hold, I can get a little, a little more money. Um, I, I've been doing this for about six, seven years. Oh, it was a lot of money, a lot of money. Not ten thousand, not twenty, about fifty thousand dollars. Because I know you need to start with a demo account. Well, I wasn't taken serious. It's a demo account, but a hundred lots. Who cares? It's a demo account. You know, you cheat your demo account. Well, I cheat my demo account. So I lied to me. And that cost me money. That cost me uh, time. Like problems in the house. So that's my story. 
And then, um, after doing the US study, I've been doing it for a while. I have, um, you know, I have three accounts with FDMO, my Forex funds. So I handle like $1.2 million right now. I make a lot of money. Thank God, finally. <laughs> uh, but people don't see the past, you know? Yeah. Because you need to work. So you need to wake up at three to trade the pound because the time, but you need to go to work. So it's all stuff. Well, that's my story, right? That that's everyone's different, you know. It's a lot of bad mentors right there. This engulfing candle get in. You feel me? <laughs> that happened to me. And guess what? That cost me money. So in the end, I started doing the US study. I don't use my money. That helps me a lot. You're gonna lose money. It's not my money. In the other hand, so are you? The, are you, uh, Francis? Are you managing capital? Yeah, doing FTMO, my forex funds. They give you six hundred thousand, four hundred thousand. You do a challenge. You do ten percent. Okay. And uh, and uh, you know you get their money. You trade their capital. You okay. keep eighty percent, and they keep twenty percent. Okay. So I don't. I'm not risk my money. Okay. And that was a key. It, it, one, it relieves a lot of pressure, right? Yes. Not, yeah, for sure. Your, your own capital, for sure. Right? It relieves well, Francisco, I, I, can I yeah. ask you a question about, sure. um, I, I don't, I'm not too familiar with day trading or scalping, mm -hmm. um, but do you have a, like a position size you usually stick with? I risk, I don't work by lot size. I risk percent. I risk 1% of trade. Okay. Well, how, me, do you, how do you know what is one percent? Like, do you have a, like a number that you always try to no. enter in a position with? I use a magic key. Do you hear a magic key? It's um, two magic keys traded. You will see uh, it's like a mouse with bottom open trade. You put your red line, like an easy order. Put it away. You put this is my stop loss. This is my TP. So they do the lot size for you. Because in five minutes, I don't have time to think. Okay. Right? This team moving 5,000 pips, 4,000 pips. You don't have time to, how many, what, what's my lot size? So I work by money. I risk uh, 6,000 on each trade because the, it's a uh, 1%. It's a $600,000 account. And then to go 3141, get $12,000, $15,000 in amount. That's it. That's my goal for the day. When I start trading one pair, that changed everything for me. Yeah, so you just focused on so you focus on the just the US 30 for now, just the US yeah, 30. just US 30. Because the market structure lower, 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 high. If you put the US 30 right now in five minutes, you will be amazed how good it is on break and retest, you know, buying the higher low, selling the lower high, get my profits, you know, close a few percent and move my stop loss by market structure, right? So let's say um, that pair is a monthly right now. So I'll go two lower time frames, maybe three lower time frames. If on the support, I start doing higher, high, higher lows, as soon as I break a structure, I'm gonna get in the higher low. So my stop loss will base on one hour, but look at the monthly, right? Right now, the charts that you have on the stream, but my TP will be based on the monthly. My stop loss Very is going good. to a lower time frame. So I do five ones, six ones, seven ones. And to be honest with you, it's so fast, I don't hold it. Yeah. I know it goes there. I don't hold it. Because uh -huh. when you see five thousand, six thousand, seven thousand dollars, I'm, in, I mean, $7, $7, I'm yeah. out. Yeah. I mean hey, it's, hey uh, thank you. Thanks yeah. for letting me know what to stay away from, man. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a no. crazy life. Anthony, it's, yeah, it I is. Tell you, listen, man. Um, it is. You know, uh, like I said, Ricky, if mm -hmm. you look, look at if you, you know, Ricky, that's what he does. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, Ricky, call, he would call me up and, you know, he's, he's you know, he'll explain what he's doing. And it's for me, it's a different. No, I've I've done some day trading. I I, uh, mm -hmm. I I I day traded for a prop firm, and um, I hated it. 
I, I think Why? it lasted six months. Right. Oh, so my, my personality, <laughs> um, and that's why we have the systems. Uh, with mm -hmm. the, I am a lazy trader, <laughs> <laughs> right? I am a lazy trader, right? And, 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 and I, I want to be able to trade and make money uh, in my 90s, right? Um, and, you know, I, I, I know traders. I remember when I was trading, um, for the prop firm, uh, there was one gentleman there. Um, it was actually his firm, and he was a good trader, man. And um, we couldn't we we couldn't have lunch. We would have you know we would have a run and go out and and get us lunch. Uh, we couldn't we would be there um, at 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 the firm uh, from about. Uh, what, 8.45, 9, before the market opened. And then we would be there glued to the screen uh, till about 4.30, right? And I absolutely hated it. Six months was way too long, right? Um, so, for and, and again, I'm not that, I, that's not my personality type. And most traders, you know, it's, it's, what I hate to see, though, is, is, are traders that try to do that, and they think that that's trading. You, you a beast. I mean, I, I got to give you credit, <laughs> Francisco. I'm not I mean. You a beast. But, but what I'm, what most, 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 most individuals can do what you do. Yeah, most, and and if yeah, and and if they do, they they fail. But um, let's mm. let's move on. Let's move on here, um, because it's it's um, we we get in um, uh, we get in past the time here. I want to go. Thanks thanks for your story. Thanks for your story. Oh no no, thank you. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Um, let's anything else? Anything else, guys? You guys want to talk about um, anything else? You want to look um, look at before we. We finished. We've got about, I would, uh, let's say, another ten minutes. Another ten minutes before we wrap up. Anything else? Okay. So let's do this. Let's take a look at. Um, we were looking at the Aussie pairs, and the yen pairs, and then the pound pairs. So I kind of just want to go through these. Um, I, I talked about waiting on the New Zealand pairs, and they're uh, uh, they're uh, uh, actually making a move to the upside. So we don't want to we want to wait on those. So let's take a look at the Aussie Aussie dollar, right? The Aussie dollar here was the sell short signal, and uh, guess what? We had some white consolidating candles, and a red candle is right here. All right, this is a great position to add. A great position to add. I would wait for a close, okay, for this candle to close, and then we could add, okay, to that position. If it breaks support, we could also add again, okay? It's an aggressive move, but we can absolutely do that, okay? Aussie New Zealand holding nicely, okay? Aussie Swiss. Aussie Swiss, the pending data here, come on. Let's move on. I've got a lot of pending data here. All right, uh, New Zealand yen. Kim, I know you would have been looking at New Zealand yen. Yeah. Right. So we've got white consolidating candles. Um, we should hold this. We get a red candle. Looks like we should. Then price will move lower.
Aussie yen looks good. Move lower. All right, so we should just hold um, the top pairs. Uh, wow, look at this. Look at pound yen. Look at pound yen. Pound yen is moving. All right, Aussie yen looks good. You were looking at Aussie yen too, right, Kim? Yep, sure was. Okay, that's looking really good there. Uh, I'm going to take a look at pound yen. So pound yen, that looks good here. Holding. The yen pairs, guys, it looks like the yen pair is going to be the next group to lead to the downside. So we got pound yen here, Aussie yen. We've got Swiss yen right up here. So they're moving up. Euro yen. So keep an eye, continue to watch the yen pairs this week. CAD yen, right? New Zealand yen all the way down here. But the yen pairs, pound yen been a big move to the uh, uh, here. You guys see that? Yeah, so definitely the yen pairs. All right. All right. Anything else, guys? Nothing else. Great information. Thanks for sharing your stories. <laughs> Take care. See you guys on Thursday. All right. We'll see you later. Thank Take you, care. David. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Cam. Bye-bye. We'll see you later, Rose. Yeah, see you.